Hey, Secretary Bissar, thank you for being here. Um, first, um, we, Senator Menendez and I have requested uh, TA um, for um, coverage for dialysis patients. I, I have TA in request for Connected Moms Act to allow mothers at risk for problems of in their pregnancy to get stay-at-home uh, monitoring. Um, and we've, these, it's outstanding for months. Uh, now, I know your staff is incredibly busy. You get lots of requests, but this actually will save lives. So can I ask that you will ask your staff to get these fulfilled ASAP? I agree with you. These are important. And let me, let me ask CMS. As you know, CMS is right now besieged with so many different things, the latest being this change healthcare cybersecurity attack. But I, let me get to them and say that this is important and, and see if they can uh, work with you double the speed. I appreciate that. Now, let me next ask about HHS um, uh, data monitorization. Um, does, does, is that an in-house data platform that HHS is using, or do you do like Department of Defense does and contract with others who are cloud-based, like AWS or Palantir or somebody like that? You know what, uh, Senator, I'll be honest with you. I, I want to get back to you because I don't want to give you misinformation. But if you give us the name after this hearing of who your person is on staff, we'll make sure we're in communication to get you that correct Sounds great. Related to that, there was this recent um, finding by the, uh, it's an acronym, the National Association of ACOs, which published data suggesting that seven fraudulent companies stole $2 billion in Medicare payments in 2023. And they did that using a virtual research data center to find the fraud. Now, that's all good. Of course, I'd like for the CMS to have been on top of it. And that's why I'd like to talk to you about data modernization at a point in time. I'm also told that academics have used this data. They don't have the ability to purchase it, so they relied upon CMS to stream it. And so I was a little surprised when CMS announced last month that it would discontinue sharing data with institutions beginning August 19th and require all researchers to move to the fee-based virtual research data center. Um, that is fee-based, right? Yeah. So I can, um, now I understand the per user price for that is quite high. Uh, so uh, I don't know if you're gonna lower the price for the academics or if you can continue. Uh, have you done an analysis on how many fewer researchers and students would be able to access the data if you go to this, um, et cetera? Senator, we're, we're in the process of reviewing this. We are, in fact, we have a, a, a solicitation for information to get responses back. As you know, this is a fairly new area. We want to be more aggressive in getting everyone on board. Every, every sector within healthcare has to get into this because no one could keep their uh, data doors unlocked with these cyber attacks that are occurring. So we're trying to get the best information we can to know exactly how to proceed. So, so, so I think it's, I, th I think you're open to allowing researchers to have it either at a discounted price or some way, but they wouldn't pay the full fright of somebody who's doing it as a for profit. Yeah, I, I won't speak to where we'll go. I will tell you we're open because we are trying to learn as everyone else is trying to learn. Okay, um, would you give me a follow up on that? Absolutely. Because fact, what the researcher who approached me has been incredibly helpful to this committee, whether the committee knows it or not, because she's just fed into our office, and the fact that she might not have it. In uh, fact, would, I would be deleterious. I'd invite your and your team's help because we're trying to get everyone to give us their best information because we don't want to miss anything, especially for the little guys. The big guys could probably afford to do some of these things, but the little guys, it could be very expensive. So any information you're getting, we'd love to have it. Sounds great. You know I've been interested in return to work. Can you tell me what percent of HHS employees and CMS employees are currently four days a week or more in the office? So what I could tell you is that, as you know, because HHS, we were involved with COVID, that we've been working from day one, uh, and we continue to uh, have folks come into the office to work. And I can tell you that we are complying with the uh, Office of Management and Budgets guidance when it comes to uh, in-office work levels. And we have a variety and what of- what is that right now? I'm sorry? What is that requirement? Uh, the requirement is, it's not, it's not a straightforward requirement because there are a lot of different work schedules and work- uh, But just as HHS, typical employee, would it be one day a week? Would it be three days every month? Would yeah. it be four days a week? NIH researcher, every day. Uh, IHS uh, caregiver, every day. But, but, but HHS building, that one down the street. HHS building, most of us 
probably almost every day because we're- That's political appointees. What about the non-political appointees? The, there where you have some flexibilities for some of the uh, career staff, it could be three out of five days a week, it could be four out of five. It depends on what their What's job What's the is. least amount it could be? Well, there are some folks who get to telework altogether because their job is essentially on, in front of a computer. And so what we're trying to do is make now, are sure- Now, you monitoring VPN data or anything else to, to measure productivity? Yeah, and we could use your help because the, the systems we're using to monitor are like from back in the 1970s and 80s, so it's been difficult to, to really get the, the dots connected. Okay. Time Thank of my you. colleagues expired. Next has been 